This is BBC One in the North West. Now, Inside Out. Hello and welcome to a new series of Inside Out North West. Coming up on the programme... They're designed to improve our journey times, but how safe are smart motorways? It's akin to manslaughter to remove the hard shoulder. How can anybody think that that is going to improve the situation? Could the ancient art of dragon boating help women recovering from breast cancer? A totally different experience that you might never have done if you hadn't had breast cancer. It's very healing and it's very therapeutic and it gives you a positive spin on life. Well done. And we meet the fell running pensioners setting new records in Cumbria. I have a heart condition, I have a pacemaker. That means that I can only run at a certain speed. Hey, if that's the penalty of getting old, then I don't mind, I can cope with that. Breast cancer survivors here in the Northwest are taking up an ancient sport as a way to heal physically and emotionally. Women from Cumbria and Lancashire have formed a dragon boat club and now regularly paddle on Windermere. They're following in the footsteps of some women from Liverpool who set up the UK's first ever club. Well, I went along to meet them. The rhythm of the drum. It resonates. It's a physical experience, but it's a hugely emotional experience as well. When you're out on the water and you're putting all your energies into paddling, you can forget about some things for a while. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to meet people who have been through it, who understand, without saying anything, what you're going through. These women share a hard-earned conviction. There is life after cancer. Every Sunday in summer and occasionally in winter, they gather on the shore of Windermere to warm up ahead of a strenuous workout on England's largest lake. They've all survived breast cancer. Most have had chemo radiotherapy, some have had surgery, and they've all been told to take it easy. But they don't. The women, from 40 years old to 80 years young, come from across Cumbria and Lancashire. They all believe the ancient sport of dragon boat paddling can boost them physically and emotionally. Former nurse Louisa Balderson from Morecambe is the co-founder of the Windermere team. After successful treatment for breast cancer, she found her day-to-day -day rhythm had disappeared. You lose your, the pattern that you take for granted of living and of life because clinical appointments replace your normal life cycle rhythm. It's a common feeling, that sense of feeling cast adrift. And it's mixed up with people saying, well, you've got the all clear. Live your life now. Put it all behind you. And there's a real turmoil. People get a sense of, of hope. Sarah Lass from Kendall was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 44. Nine months of chemo, radiotherapy and surgery followed, but the suffering wasn't over. So I finished my treatment um, in May uh, 2018 and my mum died the same day of cancer. So it's been a pretty horrible um, year, actually last year. But, you know, we're getting over it and we're moving on. But it's just really hard, actually. Um, and I don't think anybody really talks about how after treatment you're just well a abandoned it feels like you've been at hospital like two three times a week for six months and then suddenly there's nothing there when you can attention
Many of the women suffer from a side effect of breast cancer treatment called lymphedema. When the lymphatic system is removed or damaged by radiation, it can cause an abnormal and painful buildup of fluid in the arms and legs. It affects my hands, I get pins and needles in my hands. It affects my breast, it affects the side of my body. Um, and especially I do notice when I haven't been exercising, it does get worse. In 1996, in the Canadian city of Vancouver, Don McKenzie, a sports medicine researcher, challenged the conventional wisdom that women diagnosed with lymphedema should avoid upper body exercise. I knew that Dragon Boat was a safe entry level activity. It's upper body, repetitive, high energy, requires timing, teamwork. There's an amazing feel when you get on the water and make one of these heavy boats move in the right direction. And, and, and there's 24, 26 people sometimes in the boat together. So you're building camaraderie, a sense of togetherness, you're connected with the environment, and it's a whole lot of fun. He gathered a group of 20 survivors and found that paddling gave positive results for their health and well-being. The women formed a team called a breast in a boat and the idea began to spread beyond Vancouver. You really have to concentrate, don't you, to get the rhythm of it right. You've really got to concentrate when you start getting near the shore. We start off up here at the Water Sports Centre. This is the woman who introduced dragon boat paddling for cancer survivors to the UK. And we paddle down here underneath the bridge. Eve Elliott Pearson is from Liverpool, a former nurse who was diagnosed and treated for breast cancer nearly 25 years ago. Just having a bit of a chat and a bit of a laugh. I've always gone where angels for you to tread. That's what my mum would say if she was here. In 2002, Eve visited Philadelphia and saw breast cancer patients paddling in competition. It was a revelation. Pink paddlers who are actually paddling that day, that I actually witnessed it, you know, firsthand. And the joy of these women as they paddled as well. And I just knew then we needed that here. When I spoke to the women afterwards, when they got out the boat, it was such a joy to witness these women singing as they paddled down, you know. The fact that it made them feel alive, it made them feel like a warrior, it made them feel like they were getting the power back, that they felt they'd given their power away to this disease. It's not a rowing action, it's a paddling action. So if you paddle on your left, you're in this position and you move which is moving the lymph along. And if you swing over to the right, it's the same. And you paddle and you move. And both arms are moving, which is getting, opens your chest up, clears your airways, and moves any lymph that's blocked up here if you don't have lymph when it's being taken out post on. It was very difficult. As a nurse, you know a lot. You've seen a lot and you've witnessed a lot. And you know some good things can happen, but you can also know what the negative side of this disease and what I can do as well. I already knew people, myself, within my circle of family and friends who'd had breast cancer. Some who are still here, and some who, who aren't. It's very hit and miss. It almost feels like potluck sometimes. I've been very blessed so far that I'm still here. Where do you think you would have been without the opportunity to connect to all these women? I think I'd still be in a quite a lonely place. I mean, obviously it's still quite raw for me and I'm still quite emotional about it. Um, but I also know that there are people who are dealing with it a lot less well than I am. And I think that might sound a little bit selfish, but that helps as well in a way because it goes to show that actually I am dealing with it and I am making the most of it and I'm getting through it. It's almost meditative. Your mind can go somewhere else. Um, you forget that you've had breast cancer. You feel the sun on your face. You feel the wind in your hair. You feel the water. You see the water. It's a hugely sensory experience. 
Breast cancer is a disease that just hits you out of the blue and it knocks you for six. Dragon boating is a, a totally different experience that you might never have done if you hadn't had breast cancer. And it's very healing and it's very therapeutic and it, it gives you a positive spin on life. <laughs> Next week, we investigate why the numbers of fell ponies in Cumbria are falling and meet the people trying to save them. Keep them breeding, keep them going or else otherwise there isn't going to be any fell ponies, is there?